Hi, my name is Mani Ali Khani. I am the Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. The topic of today's discussion is application of V-band in one couple system. <music> If you remember the one couple system, in one side we have two contact point and in one side we have one contact point. The place that we have two contact point, uh, a couple will appear and that couple dictate the magnitude of the forces that appear in the system. Is if the wire gets deflected enough, uh, the forces will be higher and if the wire does not get deflected enough, the forces would be lower. Uh, what happens if we set up a one couple system as we discussed last time, but after a while the magnitude of the forces decreases? How we can activate the wire to continue to produce higher magnitude of forces? Well, the answer to that question one would be by increasing the size of the wire or by increase by changing the material of the wire using the stiffer material. It's a good answer, but it's not very practical that every time that we want to activate our wire to change our wire or changing the, uh, changing the material of the wire or size of the wire. So what else we can do? The other things that we can do if by uh, changing the angle of activation in the wire, how we can change the angle of activation? By introducing a bend inside the wire. When we are introducing a bend inside the wire, the angle of activation in changes. Because the angle of activation changes, the magnitude of the couple changes. And as the magnitude of a couple changes, the amount of the forces that appear in our system will changes. Keep in mind that depends on what size of the wire that you have and what material you're using. If the wire is very strong and you're introducing a bend in the, inside the wire, uh, the magnitude of the forces in your system can increase significantly. On the other hand, if the wire is uh, less stiff, is uh, more flexible, and you are introducing a bend in, inside the wire, the amount of the magnitude of the forces that appear in the system is less. Therefore, the decision on how much activation I need to produce uh, the, um, the forces that I need mostly depends on the clinician understanding about the size of the wires that they have, and understanding about the factors that we discussed before, such as the distance between the teeth, such as the uh, size of the bracket, and so on and so forth. Usually, in clinics, we start around angles about 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees. Uh, sometimes, if the wire is more flexible, maybe we increase it to uh, 30 degrees. Uh, remember, all these angles, the only thing that is changed is the magnitude of your forces. Uh, so you can decide based on how much force you need in your system. What about the position of the V-band? Does that make any difference if you put the V-band closer to the molar or in the middle or closer to the canine? If you notice when we are putting the V-band closer to the molar, uh, the end of the wire stays farther away from the canine. On the other hand, when you put the V-band closer to the middle, the distance between the canine and the molar, uh, the end of the wire gets closer to the canine, and when the V-band is closer to the canine, the distance even closer to the canine. In all these three examples, if we use exactly the same angle of the V-band, is our forces are going to change or stays the same? Well. When we are closer to the molar and we bring the wire down, the wire needs to travel a lot and that's going to cause significant deflection in the wire. That increases the angle of activation significantly. This increasing uh, angle of activation increases the magnitude of the couple and therefore associated with the higher magnitude of forces in your system. On the other hand, uh, assume the V-band is very close to the canine. The end of the wire is not that far from K9. Therefore, if you are bringing the wire down, you don't have that much deflection inside the wire. Therefore, the angle of activation is less than for the magnitude of the forces in your system is less. So even though the magnitude of the V-band was the same, the angle of activation was different. 
uh, the conclusion of this discussion is that uh, if I wanted to activate the wire by introducing the V-band in my system, um, I will place the V-band closer to the molar if I wanted to have higher forces. Uh, if I want less forces, I will put it between, between molar and canine closer to the canine now. And if I want very a small amount of the forces appear in my system, I would just put it close to the canine. Remember, in all this example, the magnitude of your forces has changed, but the direction of your forces will not change. If you remember from the previous uh, discussion, we said the one couple system is a sectional set a setup. And in that sectional setup, uh, changing the material or changing the shape or changing the size only change the stiffness of the wire and magnitude of the forces. However, the direction of your forces and moments does not change. That's not the case when we are introducing a V-band inside the setup. By introducing a V-band inside the setup, uh, we can only use rectangular wire. Why? Because when you have a round wire and introducing a V-band, the round wire can rotate inside the molar band in this example, and therefore the direction of your forces and moments will change significantly. Uh, assume the round wire uh, rotates 180 degrees, and all of a sudden your intrusion forces on the canine will change to extrusion forces on the canine. So if you have a one couple system with the introdu introduction of the V-band, uh, it is better to use rectangular wire, not round wire. Uh, this is not true when we are using uh, continuous arch wire, but continuous arch wire discussion is not part of the one couple system. The system will change. Uh, that we will t talk about it uh, later on. The other question would be, is the size of the uh, teeth in both sides of the sectional wire are important? The answer to that question is no. Assume you have a very strong canine, a very uh, large root, or assume your canine is ankylosed, or even assume the canine is an implant. Uh, in one couple system, and the, t uh, the teeth that are connected in both sides of the wire they don't impose any restriction on each other. Therefore, their size does not affect the direction or magnitude of the force that appears in the system. Thank you for listening to another se session of CTOR channel. I hope you enjoyed the session. The topic for next session discussion is two couple system. If so far you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget to press the like button. Thank you again.